Dr. Judith Greer, who's been researching MS and uh, in her area of immunology uh, for now over 14 years, is an outstanding immunologist. By the way, both uh, 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 Pam and Judith are here at the Queens University of Queensland Centre for Clinical Research. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is, is to ask Judith to talk about two major projects that she's working on. Dr. Judith Greer. Um, I'd just like to, well, I mentioned briefly uh, um, the scope of what we're doing. Mm. And so we've got a few different projects going. The first one's looking really at why is MS different in different people? In particular, you know, looking at why do some people get really severe disease and why do other people have a much more benign course? Um, another thing that we're interested in is um, why does damage occur in different parts of the nervous system in different people with MS? So, you know, some people will have MS that affects their optic nerves, so you lose sight. Others will have MS that affects more your, you know, ability to, to move um, easily. The last thing that we're interested in is how can we um, specifically treat MS? All of the treatments currently available for MS pretty much affect um, the whole of your body, like the good cells as well as the bad, the ones that are doing the damage and the ones that, that aren't. And particularly, like, I'm an immunologist um, in train, from training, so I'm interested in trying to um, just stop the cells that are causing the damage in MS and not affect the cells that you actually need to protect you for, from things like bacteria and viruses and and cancer cells and that sort of thing. Two of the projects that we're currently funded um, through MSRA, which I'll just talk a little bit more about, are the ones about why does the damage occur in different parts of the central nervous system and how can we sp um, specifically treat MS. My favourite protein is proteolipid protein or PLP. There's plenty of it, so we think it's likely to be a, a really important target of, um, of autoimmune reactivity in MS. We're finding that about, probably about half of the people who we've tested who have MS show increased levels of autoimmune reactivity against PLP. Um, and really most interestingly, what we find is that if you have that autoimmune attack against PLP combined with certain immune response genes, then um, we're seeing that people who have that particular combination tend to develop lesions particularly affecting the brainstem and the cerebellum. The brainstem regulates things like breathing, heart rate, swallowing reflexes, um, seeing and hearing, control, sweating, blood pressure, digestion, temperature, affects levels of alertness and ability to sleep. So lots of things are controlled in the brainstem. And the cerebellum um, is particularly important in coordination and control of voluntary movements and also in your balance and equilibrium. So lesions affecting these um, areas can have, you know, really major effects on, on, a, on the person with MS. Also, um, work from the um, Ozimmune study has actually shown that lesions in the brainstem and cerebellum as, as the first demyelinating event are a, a very good predictor for um, going on to develop um, MS which is, um, so that's something where we're, we're thinking that possibly, you know, if we can detect reactivity to PLP in that at an early stage, there might be a good opportunity for early intervention. Um, so we also think that we need to understand this in order to potentially develop um, therapeutic approaches to prevent lesions in these areas, which leads on to the next project which is developing specific therapeutic agents in MS. And as I mentioned earlier, pretty much all of the drugs currently available for MS act non-specifically against the immune system. So what we're trying to do is um, develop therapeutic agents that will specifically stop the PLP um, cells and the development of lesions in the brainstem and cerebellum. And there have been a few trials of similar drugs previously and they um, haven't been all that successful, unfortunately. And so why do we think ours will work? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, the first of which is that we, we have a good target. Like the, the, 
the drugs that have been tested previously have been based on uh, results from animal work, basically. So, yeah, it prevents the lesions in a whole variety of places in an animal. But w since we do have pretty good evidence now that in people with MS that these are the relevant T cells, particularly in the people who develop lesions in these areas, we think that if we can stop these cells that we'll have a good chance of actually um, uh, stopping some of the damage. Also, um, we're collaborating with a group in, in France um, who are really experts at um, making this type of drug. And in collaboration with them, we've developed a method that can um, enhance the, the half-life of the drug, so in serum, so that instead of having to, um, you know, to, to take the, the drug, um, you know, say every, every two days, for example, you might only need to take this one every two weeks. And also, the properties of the drug mean that it could also potentially be administered through something like a patch, you know, which would be a big advantage rather than having to be injected. I think on behalf of everybody with MS, we're, we're all impatient for this, but I understand completely the, the processes that you have to go through to finalise a treatment. 